Hey. Um, I want to begin with every New York Times front page since 1852. The poet Natalie Diaz begins at the beginning. What is the United States if not a clot of clouds, if not spilled milk or blood, if not the place we once were in the millions? America is maps. Maps are ghosts, white and layered with people and places I see through. In her poem, They Don't Love You Like I Love You, Natalie names what has been out of my reach for years, that maps are ghosts that they inscribe both presence and absence in their very representation. What is the relation between the map and the ghostly presence, between the violence of inscription and everything that came before? Who are the people and places the map sits on top of? How might we read a map for its hauntings, look at the landscape from anything other than a God's eye view? Over the summer, I spent a few days in the archive of Toni Morrison. My friend Autumn had just taught a class on her life's work, and in addition to reading the majority of Morrison's novels, Autumn's students spent some time sifting through Morrison's papers, which had just been made available to the Department of Rare Books at Princeton's library. One of the things Autumn showed me was a map Morrison drew of 124, the spiteful house on Bluestone Road in Beloved. When I went to the archive myself, I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for. Morrison's work has come to shape nearly everything I do, and particularly the way I think about information. Her scaffolding, or formula as she put it, one day in a Q&A after her lecture on being or becoming the stranger, goes like this. You know the formula, she said. There's data which becomes information, which becomes knowledge. But the step after that is wisdom, and neither one of those first three is sufficient. Literature, she continued, has always been the place to go for me because it's indeterminate and it's provocative and it can be beautiful. Literature as a place to go. I never thought of literature as a place. Toni Morrison thought of literature and narrative fiction specifically as a controlled wilderness, a clearing perhaps, the place to go because it's the place wisdom comes to her. Now, if Morrison finds in literature a place where we might engage and trouble and deepen data, what can she teach us about visual practices of data representation? How might we bring a search for wisdom to those practices, which so often depend on some notion of transparency or objectivity or some unadorned journalistic view from nowhere? What does a critical practice of data representation look like? What does it account for? Um, on the thread of critical practices of data representation, I still feel like no one does it better than Du Bois. Um, this is where I grew up, just on the other side of San Quentin, the oldest prison in California. Um, and for much of my life, this was not a part of my geography. I had no loved ones inside. It was kind of out of sight, out of mind. But how do you see something as sprawling as the prison industrial complex? What does mass incarceration mean visually? If you were to zoom all the way out and focus only on those spaces of exception, what would that landscape look like? This is data from an organization called the Prison Policy Initiative. First thing I did was look at their data and make a map. But in a country with as many carceral spaces as ours, a map doesn't exactly tell you much. It turns out you can pull out things like population, type of prison, latitude, and longitude. So the, what I did was I used the Google Maps API, which is just this. If you give it a URL, the one at the bottom, it'll give you back that image. And if you give it a different URL with a different uh, latitude and longitude point, it'll give you back a new image. So I kind of automated the process of basically just doing this, putting in the URL, swapping in a new point, and then getting back a different image. Um, this is what the script looked like. It's in processing. It's pretty short. And before long, I had this folder full of photographs, 5,393 of them. 
So what does the geography of incarceration in the United States look like? This is one way of answering that question. So the infinite scroll. What can be seen in a shadow? What can be gleaned from negative space? If all one has is the outlines of a thing unsaid, does that constitute data worth visualizing? As Teju Cole writes in Blind Spot, darkness is not empty. It is information at rest. Or as Toni Morrison says in Unspeakable Things Unspoken, we can agree, I think, that invisible things are not necessarily not there, that a void may be empty but not be a vacuum. In addition, certain absences are so stressed, so ornate, so planned, they call attention to themselves, arrest us with intentionality and purpose, like neighborhoods that are defined by the population held away from them. This is uh, redlining maps from most American cities. And then this is where we are right now, quite literally. How does the landscape mark us? This is not a map of every prison, jail, or detention center in the United States, but a map of everywhere someone's life was taken by a police officer in the last three years. For a project called Officer Involved, I tried to look elsewhere, away from the autoplay, and toward a different kind of mapping of police violence. So every frame you see in this video is from one of those sites of violence. Eh, eh, so now I'm solo that I can see under the skirt of an ant. Solo that I don't get high no more when I turn around no more, I just go hand. Solo my cup is a rojo, my cholo, my friend. Solo that I can admit. When I hear that another kid is shot by the popo, it ain't an event. No more. Solo that I can admit. When I hear that another kid is shot by the popo, it ain't an event. No more. No more. No more. No more. And finally, I want to turn to the southern border of the United States. Uh, this is the project that probably most directly grew out of an engagement with narrative fiction. Um, I was reading a book by Yuri Herrera called Signs Preceding the End of the World. Um, it has chapter titles like The Earth, The Water Crossing, The Place Where the Hills Meet, The Obsidian Mound, The Place Where the Wind Cuts Like a Knife, The Place Where Flags Wave, The Place Where People's Hearts Are Eaten. Um, and it's a crossing narrative, and it got me thinking a little bit more um, in, the, in the midst of a conversation about building a wall. Uh, what does the geography of that space actually look like? What would it mean to insist on that geography? Um, so using a similar script as the one from the prison mapping project, I started downloading lots of satellite imagery and ended up stitching it into a short film. I'm going to show you the first 45 seconds or so, and then I'll stop. Thank you. 
Thank you very much.